Today's video, we're gonna be breaking down a little gameplay and talking about something I've been trying to talk about here on the channel a little bit. Um, just kind of a different way to look at Madden. One of the things I wanna talk about today is just reading the defense in general. Get a lot of questions about this. A lot of people try to uh, just identify like, how can we be better? How can we be more effective about reading the defense? And there are some things you can do, but what I would say um, is I think that we kind of fall short as a community. We talk about reading the defense. If we teach people these, um, okay, if it's this, it's cover two. If it's two high safeties and they're lined up over the receivers, he's in cover two man. If they're, you know, this and that, whatever. Because when you start playing players that are actually like really, really good and they know what they're doing, they're going to disguise their coverage. One of the foundational rules um, of defense is I get totally screamed at is what he did right there. Like that kind of was a man alignment looked very much so like it was going to be uh, man to man, but it ended up being zone coverage and behind it. So the point being is identifying different threats. Um, do they have a blitz threat? Do they not have a blitz threat here? Let's see. I don't know what that was on that left side, probably a match third, um, but you know what I'm saying? So what I wanted to talk about today is kind of an air raid principle that I feel like I just continue to come back to whenever I get do a deep dive into read progressions and trying to just become more efficient, effective, systematic on offense try and read the defense a little better, I always come back to this basic principle uh, in the air raid offense that is famous. It's called, it's basically reading grass as opposed to reading defenders. And while they can be kind of like, um, I don't know what the word, like kind of wordsmithing or whatever, um, I do think there's a lot of truth to this and it does apply certainly to uh, Madden. So when we look at receiving uh, threats, like you take this play, for example, I'm going to peek this tight end route up the seam, and then I'm going to look to this short corner uh, and deep corner. And really what you want to do, I was actually going back and watching an old film, uh, old tape of Bill Walsh, who I super learned a lot about, you know, just football in general from watching um, anything you can find by Bill Walsh is always really good. He was talking about quarterback and he said on every single pass play, there is a primary receiver, there's an alternate receiver, and there's an outlet receiver. And so if you think about it like that, it kind of changes a little bit um, in terms of how you're going to put progressions together and how you're going to put pre-snap and post-snap reads. One of the big things we want to identify pre-snap in every single Madden that I've ever played, it's always important, is understanding, okay, do they have the threat of pressure? If they have a threat of pressure, you need to set up pass protection. So like, for example, this guy's got a threat of this A-gap blitz. So I'm going to do some pass protection setups. From there, I got to have a hot read. So what's my quick read? If they do blitz, I'm looking to peek out here. Okay, no hard flat defender. So I'm going to try to hit that little uh, vertical wheel. Got a bad pass lead is what it is. So essentially what we're trying to do, though, is you've got to simplify the game for yourself. If you don't simplify the game for yourself, you're going to make it super hard and you're going to inevitably, uh, because of that, you are going to make a lot of mistakes. Um, I say that as someone who has made a lot of mistakes, okay? So what I like to do and what I've kind of started to go to is I have a peak read or a snap read. It's so like right here, I'm going to peek this left side, see if I can throw this fade. Then I'm looking to the drag, the tight end, uh, or the post. Of course, I get to talk it and I get a penalty for delay a game. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to peek the fade on the left. I'm going to hit, and then I'm going to look to my high-low read. And if you think about Madden in general, and you think about route combinations, what constitutes good route combinations, what constitute good plays in Madden, historically is, again, kind of back to trying to keep things as simple as possible so that you can maximize execution. One of the things that is really important is simplifying your route combos, I think something we don't talk about a lot either. And if you think about Madden in general, almost everyone that I've ever watched and learned from in Madden, they talk about the importance of high, low reads. So if you go back to, if you pair that piece of information with the thing that I said from Bill Walsh that I think is really relevant, which is you have a primary receiver, an alternate receiver, and an outlet receiver, then you have to kind of come back and say, okay, Essentially, what we're doing on every single passing play is we're going to try to create a high-low read. If you think about any good route combination in Madden, pretty much they follow that blueprint to a T. You think about a, a flood concept, for example, the double corner concept, one of the best plays in the game. You have a high-low read. You have a short corner, which is your, or you have a, a deeper corner route, which is your high read. And then you have a short corner route, which is your low read. And then you also have kind of um, what I would call this, this, if I were to explain it like this, you then also kind of have this like outlet receiver. 
and the outlet receiver in the in the double corner concept would probably uh, be would probably be the backside drag or the backside in route because if they cover the the concept perfectly, then you're just going to start to come back and work the backside. And you saw like if you go, ever go back and watch um, the Joe Montana tapes and stuff like that. You can literally see that Bill Walsh was actually famous for being able to time that up with footwork where he was essentially saying, okay, when you hit your back foot, you're going to be looking for your primary receiver. So as you're dropping back, you're kind of scanning the defense. You're looking for your primary receiver. Once you hit that back foot, if the primary receiver is not open, then you're going to step up. And when you step up, you're wanting to look to your alternate receiver, right? And then uh, if your alternate receiver is coming, you step up again, and then you're going to look to either a scramble or um, you're going to be looking for your outlet receiver. Most of the time, the way that he timed his patterns is the third, once you hit your third read, you would basically be looking to run with your quarterback, essentially. That's kind of what most people like would, would say. If you, if you watch the tapes of the Niners when they were running this, you would literally see when Joe would hit a certain point in his uh, steps, his footwork, he would start to scramble upfield and buy time and be able to make a read. So let me explain this. We've just been talking about it a little bit here. So double corner. So if you take a look here to the left side, the, the primary concept here is the double corner route, right? That's what we're trying to work here. So what we're going to do, obviously, we're going to set up our protection. So maybe we'll slide left, you know, ID the slot corner on that side or, or vice versa. And what we're going to do is we're going to peek the tight end and then we're going to work that double corner. So peek the tight end, not there, it's banned up, but the short corner route is open and we take what the defense gives us, right? That's an example of, of really being able to quickly explain and point out your pre and post snap reads. Now, you also in any good offense have what I call and what I've been learning a lot about lately is these little constraint theory plays. An example of a constraint theory play would be a bubble screen. Um, uh, it just kind of forces them to have to respect the fit. You know, maybe they have to have a hard flat or something. Um, another example of a really good constraint theory play would be like um, like the play flood out of the uh, the bunch strong offset out of the Jets playbook. And that would be like you would essentially be taking care of double Mabel um, if they're ever in a situation where they're they're double Mabel in you. Let me see if I can fit that in there. I'm probably a little bit too late on that throw. Too tight of a window. Make a mistake. I'll just go ahead and let him score while we're talking here. So um, essentially, those are some of the big, big principles. You have your power play. You have your counter play. Um, and then you also have your constraint theory plays. Your constraint theory plays are really designed – to make sure that you are always living in a world where the, the defense has to remain balanced. When the defense starts to overcommit to things, that is where the constraint theory plays really come in handy. For example, that little RPO screen there is really effective if they don't have a hard flat on the right side. It's also really effective if they don't man up circle. Um, the play flood with the double streaks is really effective against a double Mabel cover too. Things like that. So that's kind of the purpose behind constraint theory plays is they they serve the primary purpose to kind of open up your main offense. They're, they're, they're typically not the main plays that you're calling, but they're really more supplemental uh, plays that, again, ensure. So you see here, no hard flat over there, so we can throw that. And then able to get out and uh, get some yards. This also ensures that we get on a hash mark. All right. So made a bad read there on the play Durham. I thought maybe I might be able to fit that running back in. He actually played really good defense on that with his user, was able to midpoint the two routes I wanted to hit. So backing off that slot corner, backing off everybody on the left side, but we're going to go back to that double corner progression. So you see here we got the tight end, not there, but we do have that corner route. Got a terrible inaccurate. Man, that's terrible. I don't know why that happened. But anyway, um, so if you guys want to get this full offensive ebook, I think this is the best offensive ebook I've ever released on Bunch Strong. I went into a ton of detail about the plays and what the what the opponent actually has to do to stop them. How this offense attacks dollar probably better than any other just standalone formation. That's why I like this so much is because it can be a true uh, standalone formation. You can just run this offense. Um, which is, you know, you don't see that a lot. Now, obviously, you're in Jets' playbook. So if you want to, you can audible to whatever formation you want to audible to. One of the things that I started doing is I literally will come out, I'll come out in the play, and I'll be flipped of which side I want. So you see here, see how I flipped it. Now, when you do this, this, uh, this takes their ability away to be able to back off players, which is uh, a super big advantage to the offense. So 
Um, just little things like that. So you see, he's had to make a ton of adjustments to get to the point where he can back this guy off. He plays man to man. Man to man does not stop this corner route unless he presses him. Um, and then if they press him, guess what that does to their blitz? It makes it much worse. So this is just the beauty of offensive football in general is like how they all fit together is so, um, to me, always so fascinating. You know, a little quick snap setup. Wasn't able to get what I wanted there. And we'll just take some yards of Stroud, hopefully get down. Red zone offense is completely different than regular offense in a way. And then in some ways it's a little similar, but in general it's kind of different. Um, if you just think about how the red zone is, you know, how you have to play in the red zone, um, it really is different as I just take a terrible sack. I got to throw the ball away there. Just didn't get what I wanted, and then I just held the ball. Didn't even set up a pass protection. When you're playing somebody like this, this is this is really good that we're playing dollar because this will help explain. The reason dollar is such a good defense, they have to have um, pass protection or hot reads. If they don't, the blitz threat, the blitz threat of dollar is what part of what makes it so good. The coverage combinations also make it really good. The fact that you can cover in different areas. You, um, one of the basic tenets of, of offense and defense in Madden every single year, and it really is true in football as well, is – Offense's whole goal, if you think about it, is they're they're trying to attack space. They are trying to get in space. This is also why when you read the defense, you want to focus on reading the space of which your routes are going to versus staring down the receiver, okay? Read the space your routes are going to as opposed to staring down the receiver. And when you're when you notice that the space is covered, then move off of that progression onto your next progression. And you're not, again, you're not reading the route. You're reading where it's running to. You're reading the space on the field at which you are trying to attack with the concept that you've called, right? So in double corner, for example, we're really looking to those two corner routes and where they're actually at on the field, okay? Super, super important tip. And um, anyways, so with that in mind, as you're kind of putting all this together, the defense's responsibility is to basically do the opposite of the offense. The defense's uh, responsibility is you want to constrain space or you want to um, you want to constrict the space at which the offense has the ability to pass. So that is one of the real reasons why Dollar is really the best defense in the game. It's it's also because of what we're just what I just said because Dollar gives you the ability because you have these slot corners, these slot corners, they are, they are good for blitzing as well. But as you can see right there, they limit the space at which you could throw. One of the most underrated adjustments this year out of dollar that I'm going to give you number one, I think it's maximizing your abilities. I I've talked a little bit about this, but if you don't have deep out zone KO and mid zone KO on your outside corners, you are doing your defense a disservice you are making the game harder on yourselves. If it is possible for you to get deep out zone KO and mid zone KO on your outside corners, you sell the farm literally to get those abilities. Those abilities combined together are super effective. Mid zone KO is the most underrated ability in this game. People don't realize how effective it is. And it just, it just does a really good job. But the other thing I was going to say is one of the other things we talk about constraining space, constricting space, putting really tall players at slot corner, you're seeing that pay off for me in this game right here because what's happening is he's throwing throws that would normally work, but because they're so tall and because they are in a curl flat, um, they're playing a lot better than, than people might think. Also, also I, really, um, I really suggest shading outside in zone. When you shade outside in zone, I just noticed they get more outside. Um, and I know it sounds simple and obvious, but most people don't do it. Most people just shade up underneath, over top. Um, that's kind of the way they shade. Another thing that I like about uh, shading and putting this curl flats, especially against a formation like this, is you get these reroutes on that. As you see, right there, you, see you get a little reroute there. Now that delays the timing. Um, and, and as you can see, I mean, the defense is just Cajun. If you want to get the entire defensive system, all my eBooks are on the Patreon for just $10. I think it's the easiest way to take your Madden game to the next level because you just literally, you just get access to exactly what I do, um, on offense and defense. So if you want to get access to all of our eBooks, we actually dropped an update for dollar. Uh, we dropped about an hour long update explaining everything that I'm doing defensively right now. 
Uh, and it's uh, it's probably my best update of the year. Really, really good video uh, breaking down stuff that you can do out of this defense and why this defense is so, so, so good. So I'd really encourage you to check that out. One of the things um, that people don't realize uh, about Dollar specifically is it's really, really good. The three-man rush out of Dollar is really good. A lot of people don't see that. Um, I think you should be sending three a lot more than most people do because it allows you to uh, just get more people in coverage. So anyways, think about that. What do you know about reads? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. And if you guys want to check out the eBooks, the links are in the description below.